So here we are. Hello, everybody. This is okay. Oh, is everyone? Okay, hello everybody. Welcome aboard to this uh, Friday edition of the Shortwave Show. I was a little late because at the last minute I decided to do a little change in the antennas on the RSPDX. And I wanted to put the um, I wanted to put the uh, W six LVP loop in it because I had the VHF antenna from the back. So antenna A is W six LVP loop. Antenna uh, B is my MLA thirty. Antenna C is my K one eighty WLA crap radio crap shortwave antenna. So welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome to this live show. We are here to entertain, have fun, and just, uh, you know, hopefully everybody will have some fun tuning, listening. Got a few questions. We got a few things to talk about. And uh, just plain fun all together. Uh, I've got some interesting stuff to drink today. I've got... Uh, um, so my neighbor downstairs that I actually give um, cat food. And uh, she doesn't drink any alcohol. And she had uh, some stuff left over from friends that uh, came over uh, for a backyard outdoor little gathering last week. So since she knows that I drink beer and stuff, she uh, left me three little things that I never buy. I would never buy that kind of stuff. But uh, the three stuff that... Uh, so we're starting off today with um, a Coors Slice, which is a uh, orange-flavored beer. Then we've got a Belgian Moon Mango Wheat. And uh, then I've got a Smirnoff Berry Blast. So um, I'm going to be trying these things as we do the show. I don't know if we'll go through all of them, but we'll... Uh, We'll see how it goes. So that's the first one I am uh, having is the course slice. And this is what it looks like. So cheers, everybody. It's very weak, 4.2%. It's just too funny because when I poured it and looked at the color, I thought, man, it looks like pee. <laughs> so um, welcome, everybody. So this is a shortwave show, a show about radio. We are here twice a week. On Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at 0 UTC, 5 p.m. Pacific. On Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, that's 1 Pacific, and that's 20 hours UTC. And, of course, we talk about radio and just share and have fun together tuning the bands. And uh, hopefully we'll be listening and hearing stuff. Let me bring up uh, Priam out of curiosity if uh, we uh, might want to chase a few stations so there's m12 uh morse code station on 1487 817 in four minutes so we're going to tune that 14817 and we're going to put ourselves in uh 14817 in uh oops See if we can hear uh, the Morse code. M12 is the Moscow Russia um, number station. And it's a Morse code station. So 14817 in uh, three minutes and a half or something. So we're going to check that out. So we talk about radio. We have a lot of fun talking about radio. It's kind of cool this uh, today. It's barely, what is it? It's barely 20 Celsius. So we're in the upper 60s. 
uh, kind of a cool ish day and a lot of wind. So um, hope that everybody is uh, going to have fun. My name is Gilles. I'm located in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. That's the northeast part of North America. And of course, uh, we have a beautiful chat room with wonderful people that are here and are helpful. And it's just a lot of fun to just, you know, have some cool time together. Remember that radio is very solitary in general. And, you know, a lot of people stay solitary, but enjoy the fact that they do still feel like they're in a gang of radio geeks. Uh, and, you know, not everybody that is watching actually is interacting in the chat room. So um, there's a lot of people that just stay quiet, and that's fine. And they enjoy the fact that they can read the chat and they can, uh, you know, interact and see, um, you know, the show at the same time. Uh, when all of this is over, well, you know, you might get depressed. Maybe you're going to say, well, you know, I am now all alone again on my radios. Well, you don't have to. You can join in the Facebook group. They're, they're also, you know, I mean, we passed 1,000. We're like a, a thousand and fourteen or something like that. I mean, out of one thousand, there's a very small number of people that do actually participate in the, the, the discussion and the chat and the and and posting stuff. But I'm sure that a lot of people are just looking back and enjoying what they see and what we post. So uh, the Facebook group is the same name as this uh, channel, official. SWL channel. Question number one that arose uh, this week from somebody said, what SWL mean? Well, shortwave listening or shortwave listener. So SWL is a shortwave listener. And uh, so I um, hope that you enjoy our show. We got a few questions uh, that uh, I've got here and there this week. And when I get questions, one of the first things I always think is, you know what, it might be a good idea to um, mention these questions live because when somebody asks a question, most of the time, a lot of people are asking themselves the same question. But you know, we sometimes we don't want to. We don't. We feel like we're going to be, you know, dumb if we ask a question that's we kind of think is simple and so on. And you know, we shouldn't. Uh, there shouldn't be that. Um, that side of things we we should just be you know uh asking questions but you know sometimes we don't so you know uh there's a great way of, of asking a question you can send me an email and say you know i have this question and you know i, I won't even mention your name if you don't want to but we have a little bit of questions that i thought was would be interesting to uh to talk about so uh hello everybody I am hearing um, a tone on 14817. That's interesting. Uh, Matt, MDK2 from Denver, Colorado. Sunny skies and 91 Fahrenheit. 17% humidity. Whoa, that's very... Ah, oh, here's a Morse code. Morse code, not super strong, but it's there. So 14817CW Morse code. This comes from Moscow, Russia, by the way. <clears throat> Bobby Burgess, Morgan City, Louisiana, USA, WA4, uh, WA5107 SWL. Uh, Rick, um, W8PRR, nice to have you on board, WOHP1390. Worked New Mexico and Colorado on FT86 meters yesterday. 50 watts into a G5 RV, cool. I heard Mexico on FT8, and I heard uh, Puerto Rico on FT8 on Wednesday's opening. Pretty cool. Uh, 5313 upper sideband. James Farley, nice to have you here from New Jersey. 11 meters is open. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to go check 6 meters again. Uh, the K180 WLA might not work on shortwave because it's crapping out of the FM or breakthrough, but... It's actually working surprisingly well on six meters and on VHF. So I guess it's going to become my VHF antenna, dedicated antenna. 
So, you know, not all is lost. It's going to serve a purpose. Nick Amendo, nice to have you here from Romania. Uh, Shady Pyro 90, nice to have you on board. Jeff Williams from Southwest Cornwall, UK. Trond Volstad, nice to have you here, Trond. And um, from Norway. What do we have from uh, LA1008 SWL? Eyebrawler, nice to have you here from Arkansas. Louis Girofart, bonjour et bienvenue de la France. Nice to have you on board. Bought a new toy, a Yisu FRG100 like new, perfect condition. Works superbly well. Cool, and it's a nice little radio. I always thought it was a cute little uh, tabletop receiver. Uh, the Yisu the FRG100. David, KJ4CMY, nice to have you here. Calvin, nice to have you on board. Arjun, nice to have you here from Cyprus. Tom DXer, nice to have you on board from the Lower Hudson Valley, New York. John Pickney from Hoke Hill, Virginia. W3XWT. Um, Dream Shadow 76. Nice to have you here. I go by my time. <laughs> Shady Pyro 90 S 15140 Radio Vanna Cuba French service. Um, what else do we have? John Pickney, nice to have you here. What else do we have? PLF Radio, bonjour et bienvenue de la France. C'est toujours un plaisir. Toujours un plaisir. De vous avoir parmi nous. Andy Coley, nice to have you here. Frank Fee, nice to have you on board. Frank from Austria. Gerardman from the Chicago area. Rob, nice to have you here from Phoenix, Arizona. We have Joe Tyson, nice to have you on board from North Carolina. Dijan, why do you feel upset today? Um, the five youngs, nice to have you on board from Elmira, New York, into QQE. Pretty cool. Scott Haley, nice to have you here from Hot Oklahoma. <laughs> John Pickney, Emission Couleur de Radio Canada. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Jen says a barber shop to which I went since I was a little boy I had to close down because of coronavirus after 72 years. Oh, wow, that's sad. You know, the place where I go, it's uh, three or four old guys. They're all, you know, like they're all 70 years old or older. And um, I shouldn't say old guys. I'm sorry, guys. I should say older guys than me. Um, so they're 70 or, or older. And um, so when I called because the uh, they're opening on Monday after being closed since March. Uh, they said they won't open because since they are older men, they don't want to catch the virus because there's a, a higher risk. So they're staying close for now. Alessandro Navarro, nice to have you here, Alejandro from Spain. Buenas noches, mi amigo. VK2FBAJ, Brian, nice to have you here from Sydney, Australia. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's good French. Not staying long as long. Uh, I'm working on a construction site this morning. Oh. So uh, well, it was nice to have you here. Um, Keegan, nice to have you here. XNADXer, Northwest Arkansas. G Lee, nice to have you on board. W A six one two O S W L from Fresno, California. We have Legion. At least, at least you got your new XH Data D eight oh eight. How do you like it? Matt says, ha, huh, I live in Coors Country, but I never seen that orange one. Not that I linger over the big business beer section. Yeah, that's not the kind of stuff that I buy, honestly. John Pickney says, the Smirnoff Berry Blast is very good. A bit on the sweet side. Yeah, I've had Smirnoff stuff in the past, and usually I find it very sugary. Um, what else do we have? Bob Perrin says, watching an old guy drink sugar beer. 
Luke Conning, an old guy. <laughs> Michael Andrew says, I was given a box full of assorted beers. Free is good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Free is good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, not always, Joe. Free beer, yeah, but not always tastes better. <laughs> Sometimes it depends on what choice they, they actually have. Alex, BA1SBM. Nice to have you here from the Netherlands. Eric Cottrell, bonjour. Nice to have you on board. Good afternoon. So uh, how are things on Lille du Cône Orange? Uh, pretty good. Pretty cool. Cool and windy today. But it's, uh, it's going okay. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, you know, can't wait for things to get back a little more normal. But, uh, hey, we've got the okay for... Uh, we've got the okay for... Uh, a few things starting Monday. We've got restaurants reopening next Monday to June the 22nd. So slowly things are kind of opening up. Uh, it's just sad that pretty much everything uh, that is a festival around Montreal, because, I mean, we have so many festivals in the summertime here. Uh, unfortunately, everything is canceled. And that I'd say that's the bummer of the summer, because I like to go to these festivals. And especially one, uh, which is the uh, International Jazz Festival, I always like. And it reminds me of my sister, because my sister uh, that died uh, from cancer um, in 2011, we would uh, often, she would come to Montreal just to have a few days at the Jazz Fest with me. So, you know, there's kind of a, there's the fun of music and being outside and just enjoying beautiful weather. But, you know, that little something, I don't know why, every time I go, it's like if, my sister is there, even though she's gone. There's a little something about it. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. So no festivals this summer, so I guess we're going to go to the park. I want to, uh, next week, there's going to be a lot of sunshine and some warm weather. So I am starting to plan my Tuesday or Wednesday, one of, of both days. I don't know which one is going to be Perry Island Day. So uh, I will be going to Perry Island. I'm going to set up over there and uh, put the radios up and, and just, you know, enjoy the uh, outdoors and the beautiful weather. So um, what else do we have? Matt, uh, Curtis Bazaar Jr., nice to have you on board. Um, Matt says we had some unseasonably cool weather earlier this week in Denver, but it's back to normal now. Yeah, we're gonna sp we're gonna have some cool weather. So you know, for those that don't know, here in uh, Montreal, the weather at this time of year, we should have around uh, you know twenty three, twenty four Celsius. Uh, that's pretty much the normal here in Montreal for this time of year. In July, it's more like 26, 27 Celsius, which is type kind of normal. So today we should have like 23, 24. It's 19. And tomorrow's going to be 17. So it's kind of cool for this time of year a little bit, but it's okay. But next week we're getting back up. We're, uh, I think on Wednesday, it's like 28 Celsius. And uh, Thursday and Friday next week is like 30, 32. So we're getting back up into 80s, even close to 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, <clears throat> Shady Paro says, was raining a little bit this morning here in uh, Curtin, ABC. Now it's sunny. Um, Bob Perrin dialed its Texan PL 360 to 14817. Um, is, the PL 360 doesn't have the um, a single sideband, but, but when it's strong enough, often you can still kind of make out that there's a Morse code in it. David, KJ4CMY, says, with a radio, you're never alone. That's true. There's always something there. Uh, Dijon says, this morning, this morning, the weather this morning was terrible in northern Germany, but it became better and better as we drove south. It's mostly very, very windy. I mean, uh, we had uh, almost 100-kilometer 
an hour winds yesterday, and today we we're having like 60, 70 kilometers um, uh, of, of wind. And actually, there's a park not far from here that I went, uh, I, I went by yesterday with a bus stop and they have little, you know, um, little bus, um, kind of a shelter for if, when you're waiting for the bus, when it's raining or something and the branch, a tree branch was actually broke off the, the tree and, and was on the, on the roof, which was kind of bent like this. Uh, so, uh, there was a few branches and actually there was a, yesterday, I think at some point there was almost a hundred thousand people without power at some point because of the winds. <clears throat> PA1SBM says questions are never dumb answers are sometimes oh that's that's true uh, Bob Perrin okay here's a question how did you know to tune 14817 and what and when it would broadcast so there's a website called Priam and actually uh, if you look in the chat uh, somebody has shared it actually uh, PLF radio just a, a little above this Preon.org is a website that has schedules of all the number stations and uh, at least the ones that we have and we know some specifics of their own schedules because uh, there are some that, that, that just pop up out of the blue. But that website does have uh, a lot of information and actually there's a lot of audio. Um, there's a lot of audio clips of different stations, even some from the past that don't exist anymore. And there's really a lot of information on number stations from around the world. <clears throat> Tron is on 14817. What else do we have? The only stupid question is the one that are not asked. Yep. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> David says, uh, Jill, Jill, the Morse code from Russia and pulls out <laughs> this one time pad. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I'll be there. Cool. <laughs> uh, John's picnic 14, eight, one, seven way over the noise in Nova. Cool. Brian Penny. Nice to have you here from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Roberto Rojas. Nice to have you on board. Larry Stevens from Newark, Ohio. Lozingado, thank you very much. Nice to have you here. Where are you located? Let us know. We want to know. The Gypsy. Oh, I like that. The Gypsy. Uh, jumping near barbershops are still appointment only. Yeah, here it's appointment only also. Uh, what else do we have? Kevin J. Napalo. Nice to have you here as WS2H from sunny New Jersey. Thanks to your um, ICOM ICR30, I've discovered a fantastically wonderful me. I love to listen to uh, VHF uh, and UHF amateur satellites. There's a D Star net on Friday nights that deals with local here in Montreal that deals with amateur satellites and they actually listen to the satellites as they pass over while they're doing the net so i've been enjoying that on the icon icr 30 uh, on d-star so that's really cool wf7i ombru bonjour nice to have you on board big vhf contest this weekend yes that's true starting up uh, tomorrow and going through uh, sunday I going through, I think it's like even like 02 or 300 Monday. Uh, so VHF, uh, listen to six meters, two meters, check it out. There's going to be a lot of activity. It's uh, It's been a long time, but I remember five, four or five years ago for the VHF contest and also for uh, field day coming up, by the way, the uh, they had set up, there was a park. Uh, not too far from here where they had set up amateur stations and they were showing everybody what amateur radio was all about. It was really, really cool. There was somebody new house. Nice to have you here from Brazil. DGENS likes the D808. Very good. It comes quite close to my satellite 700, but it overloads heavily on my long wire 
and I get images everywhere on the, with the long wire. Yeah, you know, these portables are not made to have heavy antennas, especially when signals are very strong. But they perform really well. John Pickney says, uh, Barry Vilham Fist is canceled for 2020. Yeah, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, Eric, they will be doing some uh, indoor seating also, but with uh, distancing. So they'll have, you know, empty tables in the middle of where people are and so uh we'll be inside uh, outdoor and indoor is possible in the restaurants and it's making a lot of people mad because uh, especially the, the bars because what's happening and i do find it kind of dumb they will they changed they want to change the, the law so that a restaurant can actually give you alcohol they can serve you alcohol without you eating anything and, of course, what does that do? That, you know, the restaurant becomes a bar. If you can just drink, you're not in a restaurant. You're in a bar now. And the bars, they are still closed. And there's no date to when they were not open. So a lot of bars say, what? They will be able to serve alcohol only, and we can't open. Uh, sorry, but that doesn't go. And so there are a couple of bars um, there's one called Ziggy's. It's very popular with uh, uh, downtown on Crescent. That is uh, that they actually said that if even if the government doesn't give the okay, they are going to open on July 1st because they are tired of all of this and they are they need to they need to sell because they need money and they need to pay the they need to pay rent and they need to do you know pay the bills. So, and I've heard more and more bars that are saying, you know what, we are going to open on July 1st, whether you like it or not. And of course, now that's creating, creating friction with the, go the government that says, you open, you're going to face a consequence, but we'll see. Uh, WF7I Ombru, nice to have you on board. Parle Francais on the live chat. Yes. Bike DXer, good evening. Nice to have you on board on board from Edinburgh. Uh, been very sunny and warm since lockdown, however, in the UK. Nice to have you here, Ron. Catalan, nice to have you here from Germany. Curtis Pizarre Jr., nice to have you here. <laughs> Frank P says uh, Austria is waving to Germany. Now that's called friendship. Uh, Stephen Wood, nice to have you on board. The webcam I'm using is a Logitech C920. Logitech C920 from, uh, and it's it's getting difficult to find at a decent price. Uh, they've gone up in price, and they're getting more and more difficult to find. Uh, I was lucky that I, I, I purchased it for like ninety bucks or something, a hundred bucks. And it's an amazingly good camera, honestly. Uh, Mad Radio DXer says, here in the UK, weather is colder than usual now after warm spell. So uh, nice to have you here, Mad Radio DXer. Uh, Keegan says, 122nd uh, Tondi Town Grape Festival. Arkansas was canceled this year. Yeah. Let's check it out. They didn't check it out. We got to check out. Anybody checked in from the? Uh, anybody checked in from the uh, email? And uh, from the email, we have Elizabeth that says hello, and uh, that uh, says that she's happy to be here tonight. We also have uh, Robert that is saying hello from New Mexico and uh, happy to be watching also. So Elizabeth and Robert, two uh, regular viewers from... Uh, Elizabeth is in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And uh, it's nice to have all of you here, my friends, as usual. And of course, everybody's saying hello to Robert and Elizabeth, which is cool. 
Eric says, I would not be surprised all the AmFest and ham flea markets are canceled in my area. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I think also. And here, you know, they're still t saying that uh, so the border between the U.S. and Canada has been closed except for, you know, business. And uh, that is supposed to end on June 21st. But uh, according to some rumors, the Canadian government is going to ask for the, the border to stay closed until July 21st. So uh, I guess we won't have a lot of... Uh, we won't, you know, usually here in the, in the summer, there are two, two countries are making a lot of the uh, tourism in Montreal, the United States and France. These are two big countries for tourism in Montreal. And uh, so I guess this summer there won't be a lot of U.S. Uh, tourists, unfortunately. So it's going to be a weird and tough year for a lot of... Uh, you know, no wonder whatever the amount of money the governments are giving to try to make things as good as possible. There's a lot of people out there that are losing a lot of money and are losing maybe their businesses uh, with all of this. Uh, John Pickney, Norton and McAfee. What, 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 wait, 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 I got to read that. And McAfee missed an opportunity. He should have come up with an annual antivirus 2020 is infected. <laughs> uh, I mean, Shelly, nice to have you here, Shelly. Alejandro in the north of Spain is pretty much rain those days and a bit chilly. Hope weather gets better. Uh, DGen says, was so amazed when I received CHU on Monday. I wrote a report immediately. I hope to get a QSL card. Do well. They QSL. They QSL very well. So uh, they will QSL, absolutely. Lee Burkett, nice to have you here. Says, the weather is changing in the UK. Still managing to get out and bad and DXing. Having fun with my Commodore 64 and Super Nintendo. Cool. I'm waiting for that cartridge that I ordered from Yugoslavia or whatever. I know it's not Yugoslavia anymore, but uh, with like Serbia or something. And um, that is, uh, that has like several hundred Commodore games on a little cartridge that goes in the back of the Commodore computer. I can't wait to get that and play the games. It's going to be fun. Uh, what else? What else? Sheldon Harvey, nice to have you here from Greenfield Park, Quebec. And of course, we recorded today the uh, International Radio Report show on uh, uh, for for Sunday for Sunday morning Montreal time. The International Radio Report is a show about radio, thirty minute show. And we have some interesting topics this week, and uh, it is on CKUT.ca for the streaming. If you live in Montreal, near Montreal. You can listen to CKUT on 90.3 FM, and it's 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 14.30 UTC. And if you go to ckut.ca, you can go into the archives. Go and click the International Radio Report on Sunday, and you will have three months of the show. And uh, today, I think we were at show number 12, uh, 12 or 13 that is pre-recorded, Sheldon. Time goes fast. Uh, from our last show, which was on March 15th, from the studio. Uh, now we're continuing, and we're probably going to continue throughout summer, I guess. I don't see the studio at CKUT opening before September. So um, I guess we're going to continue like this for a while. Lots of editing today. And so there's a couple of little places that it sounds a little a little weird. I did the best I could, but you know, it's it's better like that than the the, the weirdness that it sounded like before editing. That's the uh, beautiful part of being able to edit stuff on recordings. Um, and there's a little surprise at the end. So if it doesn't get cut, well, uh, and you guys listen to the show, you'll see a little surprise at the end before we uh when the show ends i'm having fun uh i hope you don't mind sheldon i'm having fun 
putting stuff at the end that that are radio related, of course. Uh, but I find kind of interesting to um, just you know put a little something at the at the end of the show. So last week it didn't pop up, so I added this week again uh, because the show got cut before we uh, reached the end. Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? Try to depression guy. Nice to have you on board from the UK. So I am uh, eight minutes behind. Not too bad. Eric Cottrell says they separate restaurants and bars down here as well. I mean, there are bars that I understand. It's kind of complicated to do anything. But if you open restaurants, there are bars that could also be uh, placed in a way that that you could still you know open them. Um, I you know it's I think the biggest problem isn't that the bars stay closed. I think the biggest problem that's making everybody uh, mad is the fact that they changed the law so that a restaurant can serve alcohol. I mean that becomes a bar, and that is I understand why bars are really um, you know. Uh, going crazy over this. Bill Mead, nice to have you on board. Bonjour from Pennsylvania. De la Pennsylvanie, like we see in French. Uh, let me just check here, as I'm uh, not looking much. If you guys want to hear some more stations, there's uh, XP in, well, it's in 22 minutes, so we have time, but in 20 minutes from now, M12. Uh, Morse code from Moscow on 11144 and XPA2, which is the uh, digital polytone station on 13462 upper sideband. We're gonna we're gonna try to listen to that uh, at the top of the hour. Uh, what else do we have? Hubert Major, bonjour et bienvenue. No electricity here since yesterday. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> made you realize you got a wife and son. It wouldn't work with me because, you know what, Yuba? I would have realized there's no more noise on the radio and let's listen to the radio. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, one that I found funny, it was on uh, Facebook. I'm trying to remember the joke was... Um, it was something like, uh, you know, wow, well, uh, with, with, with the... What was it? The power went out, and I actually talked to uh, somebody uh, that was in my living room. Discovered that she's my wife, and that she doesn't work doesn't work at Walmart anymore. <laughs> it's like okay. Uh, Tron's got his new Texan PL six six zero. That's great. <clears throat> so everybody is saying hi to Elizabeth and Robert. Um, let's go down. What do we have? So, uh, PA1 SBM, uh, Lex says in the Netherlands, the all AM fares are canceled. Yeah, it is sad, but at the same time, you know, we gotta, we gotta be careful still, you know. Redalva65, nice to have you on board from a riot-free New York City. Yeah, things have gone, I've, I've settled down now, uh, which is a good thing. I mean, uh, enough, enough with the violence. It's all just be friends and talk. Bob Perrin says, our field guys are use handheld radios that cover 108 to 137 uh, to announce uh, runway crossings. We want to standardize. Uh, what handheld would you recommend? Durability more important than price. So um, I don't know. Anybody have a suggestion for Bob? Bill Fagan, nice to have you here. Where, oui, Monsieur Paul? He's, he's sleeping uh, in the bedroom. He actually spent, you know, now it's nice outside, so he spends a lot of his time just in the grass in the backyard under a tree and stays there for like hours at a time and looks at look looks around at what's happening and uh now he came back up uh what 
else do we have? Degen says all borders in Germany are open again, but there will be big loss of tourists in Nuremberg, where I go to school. There are normal tons of Korean and Japanese and Chinese tourists, none so far. Yeah, I think for every country this year, tourism is not going to be the thing. A lot of people are just going to stay in their home. Uh, you know, here they were saying that barbecue and swimming and swimming and swimming pool sales are like up the scale because people are thinking they're just going to stay home do barbecue and swim in the pool in their backyard this summer Rufus newt nice to have you on board and uh from work and chilling in the laurentian valley ontario palama pa pamela um pamela militia caddy melody Nice to have you here from Tampa. What do we have? Alessio Poda. Nice to have you here. Charles Williams. Nice to have you on board from San Diego. Frank, Radio Romania broadcast two days before that they have uh, no money for QSL cards. Oh, really? It happens. You know, sometimes the uh, stations actually uh, have, you know, very tight budgets and Let's face it, you know, QSL cards are not required. You know, if if Radio Romania wanted to know if it was heard in North America, they could just take a computer, go on an online SDR and check the frequencies. I mean, you know, if I had a station and wanted to know if I was heard in my target area, that's what I would do. I would go online, look at the SDRs where I'm supposed to be heard and see if my signal's there. Unfortunately, QSL cards are not something that they have to uh, offer, you know. Hey, Bill. Nice to have you here. Pamela has a question. I have a question. I have a supersonic FMAM shortwave I got three days ago. Could I be able to come across a number of stations? Uh, if it's sensitive enough and you hear stuff on shortwave, there are a few number of stations that you might hear. You might actually hear the Cuban number station. Uh, that's an AM mode, so that one would be one you could probably receive easily. Caveman, nice to have you here, Caveman. <clears throat> Mickey Dalmage, nice to have you here. Says hi from a 28 Celsius Sherwood Park, Alberta. Cool. We had some decently warm weather this week. Uh, we were in a couple of days in the lower 80s. Uh, it's going to be cool this weekend, but it's getting back to warm weather uh, next week. <clears throat> uh, Shitty Power 90 says, I think when the Postal Service resumes in Romania, they'll probably be able to send uh, PayPQSL cards. They've been promising. UVB seventy six uh, Pamela is a hard one. That's a very, very, uh, that's a very tough one, and you need to have low noise and good reception to to be able. But summer is not the best time. Uh, Four six two five is really not propagating most of the time in North America during summer. But as you'll get into fall, you, it's possible. Old Radio Man, nice to have you here from northeast Northeast Tennessee. Question in a waterfall. What is a signal that looks like Kodar, but is a slanted series of dots instead of lines? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. That, I, I'm i not sure, but I think it's a form of radar. It usually goes in bursts. You know, Kodar is stable. It's always there. Uh, but if uh, what you are talking about is what I think, and I've seen it appear from here from time to time, it uh, it is I do believe so. It's bursts that happen that are slanted dots, and I believe that's a kind of radar. And it actually hops around in different frequencies. So if you look at one, you'll have that burst, and if you're you have wide enough uh, frequency coverage, you'll notice that the bursts move around and the different frequency ranges. But I believe that's a kind of radar. 
<clears throat> Eric Cottrell says, same here. Bars with indoor seating and food can open, but not, nobody can sit at the bar. Uh, what else do we have? Hubert, Major, yes. What else do we have? What else do we have? Eric says, I also heard a rumor about the border not opening until July. Yeah, I'm supposed to, they're supposed to extend that until July 21st. Estrella Garcia, nice to have you here, my friend. What else do we have? Sometimes they, I think they, uh, what they do is they, the QSL cards, they send eQSL sometimes and they sell postal QSLs, depending on the budget they have. Um, one that apparently, anybody tried it? Because one that had stopped and that I had, I kind of heard, I kind of heard the fact that Radio Exterior de España was QSLing again. Anybody tried Radio Exterior de España? Especially now since they're back in English on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Anybody had a QSL card from them? Joe Tyson, Motorola or ICOM handhelds? Yeah, in general, you'll have good ones with those. Billy Conlon, long-lived Texan PL660. Erica Trell says Icon makes pretty good aviation handhelds. So uh, kind of interesting. I do believe ETWN uh, does QSL. Yes, I think they do. I think they do. JD Pyro, 7055 lower sideband, Russian or Ukrainian radio war still happening. I oh, mean, pretty crazy. Dejan, I finally got my WRMI QSLs today. I've been waiting for them so long. I love the one showing the Okeechobee antenna field. Yeah, that's the one I have here. Um... They take a long time to QSL, but they eventually QSL. Mike, WDX50, nice to have you on board from sunny Northwest Arkansas. Jared DX, nice to have you here, my friend. Yeah, no, UBV, UVB76, the buzzer is an easy target in, uh, in Europe. But North America, it's a tough one. It's more, it's more difficult. I've had uh, so many people, when I posted, the last time I posted a video with the buzzer, I don't know how many people said, you know, you hear it and I, ne I never, never get it and you're not that far away. And, you know, it's all in the noise level you've got, basically, because if I get it, it means the signal is really getting to North America, but it's really the noise floor. If your noise floor is too high, it's washed out. And that is what is probably the most, the biggest problem. James Powers, nice to have you here from New Hampshire, KC1ENJ. Uh, DJ says, yep, Radio Exterior España is QSLing. Cool. Cool. So uh, I need to try it. I need to. I need to send them a report. Let them know I, I'll send them a report in French. Let them know I'm listening to the French service. Joseph Figenbaum, nice to have you on board from the Bay Area, California. Now the Swedish Rhapsody numbers was was real at the time, probably. You know, it's what what what's happening with number stations is the fact that there's I'm pretty sure fake transmissions, fake things to try to kind of lure you and have you waste time in trying to decode or understand something. 
Uh, so, you know, all sorts of things are up there. It's the, the number stations is one mysterious land of weirdness, uh, I can tell you. Hey, Kadarius, nice to have you here from uh, Copperas Cove, Texas. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Yep. I will pet Paul the Cat for you, absolutely. I will actually pet Paul the Cat for everybody in the chat room. Uh, no problem. Well, apparently, they are restarted again, uh, Matt. Um, I'm going to have to try. I'm going to have to try. Absolutely. Billy Collin. No, Paul is he, he's very intrigued by the birds, but what I like about Paul is that he doesn't really he doesn't really go after them. So, you know, he just looks at them, gets annoyed at them, does weird noises sometimes while watching them, but he's not he doesn't chase them. Steve Miller, nice to have you on board. Uh, what else do we have? Steven Windows, 11640CRI via Mali on the air now in English. Signal strength is good. Check it out here, 11640. What do we have? Yeah? Not bad of a signal. Not bad of a signal. 13630, I think, is the other one. Yeah, 13630 uh, 13, also coming in. Not too bad. John, what do we have? Brady, KJ7GFT. Nice to have you on board. And our first major thunderstorm yesterday sounded like two airplanes colliding together. So um, across the way, a transformer blow. Wow. Got to be cautious. Absolutely. Akinario says, Paul the Cat is king. Don't you forget that. Oh, I'm not forgetting. <laughs> Stephen Wood says, cannot let the cat out due to coyotes. We have um, we have a few of those in some parts uh, of the city, but not here where I live. It's uh, kind of too, too centralized. They don't come all the way to over here, so... Uh, the only things we see here are uh, are uh, skunks and um, um, what's the other thing? I forgot the English. I forgot the English for raton laveur. So, um, anyways, Jerry has New Orleans New Orleans weather facts on twelve seven eight eight. Cool. Luis Corsia, what's the best tabletop shortwave radio for the money? Uh, you know, anybody that has a lot of money, you know, I comment the RD5, 8600, sorry, and stuff like that are really good. But uh, these, you know, I, I personally, and that's my opinion, and I know that it's not what everybody shares, but personally, uh, I think, you know, you just buy an uh, SDR Play RSP device. And you've got a lot more uh, bang for the money you're spending than buying an Icom ICRD 600. That's my opinion on it. But that said, if I'd have millions of dollars lying around, I probably would have an Icom ICRD 600 because it is a nice looking radio and it is really, really, you know, kind of cool. But. Um, Uh, what else do we have? Pat says, never let the cats out. Yeah. I have no choice because, I mean, a raccoon. Thank you, uh, Peter Frazio. Raccoon. I don't know why I forgot raccoon. It's not a word I forget usually. It's a raccoon. Merci beaucoup, Peter Frazio. So we have uh, skunks and raccoons here. I did see a groundhog, uh, Sheldon, the other day. Um, not very far from here, there's a park, and there was a groundhog crossing 
the pedestrian uh, walkway. He just like stared at me for a second and continued on and disappeared in a little, little bit of forested area that, that was there. Um, so, you know, Paul is a cat that when I got him, it was already going outside. So, you know, when the, when you actually have your cats inside and never go out, it's easier to manage than when you have a cat that goes out all the time and you want to try to tell him not to go out, it doesn't work because he's used to going out. So, you know, if you don't let him go out, he kind of, kind of gets depressed. By the way, guys, uh, as I'm thinking about it, in uh, three minutes' time, tune 11 one four four. 11 one four four cw And thirteen four six two upper side band. So eleven one four four CW and thirteen four six two upper side band. So eleven one four four is M twelve Moscow Russia number station and Morse code. Thirteen four six two is the polytone uh, digital format of Moscow Russia transmission. Uh, so two minutes left. I'm going to try them both here. Levy Nathan, shalom. Nice to have you here from uh, Israel. Uh, shitty Pro 90, 32, 58, upper sideband, 54, 10, upper sideband were gong frequencies. Yeah, at the time, yeah. Crossley Fiverr, nice to have you on board from El Paso. Larry Stevens, oh yeah, we got tons of scrolls in Montreal. Absolutely. <laughs> Did the groundhog see its shadow? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Kevin Janopoulos has had an Alicraft KX3, and that was phenomenal shortwave receiver. I so wish I didn't let it go when it was uh, was experimenting with different ham radio modes. Yeah, sometimes we let go. We let go of things that we darn regret. I got a few receivers from the past that I should never let go. Sean Harvey says we have a groundhog living under our neighbor's tool shed. We also have a bunch of white-tailed rabbits around us this year. Oh, wow. We have skunks, but in over 30 years living here, I only saw one raccoon. The funniest thing about it, and I need to take a picture again, is that the skunk we have here is white with a black stripe. It's the reverse. It's the reverse of a regular uh, skunk, which is black with a white stripe with white stripes. He is white with a black stripe, and he's Paul the cat's friend because a couple of times at night, around midnight, 1 a.m., they're actually next to each other eating I don't know what out of the grass, and you're like, okay. And the first time I was panicking, I was like, uh, Paul, that's a skunk. Come here. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with you being uh, sprayed by the skunk. It never happened. They, they they look like friends. I don't know. Um, raccoons here we have a couple, but uh, down closer to the uh, St. Lawrence River, there's a lot of places where raccoons are of a huge problem here. John Pickney, why did the chicken cross the road to prove to the possum and skunk it could be done? <laughs> so, do I hear anything? 11144. Morse code. And I'm hearing a weak. Yeah, it's there. So both frequencies are there. 
So I'm hearing the Morse code on 11144, and I'm hearing the XPA2 on 13462. Uh, Jerry, any word on the BBC Midwinter broadcast yet? It's coming up. Oh, it's true. It's coming up usually on the solstice day. We um, haven't heard anything about it. I'm totally right on that. Didn't hear anything about it. Paul the cat is running around eating flies all the time. And the other day he ate a kind of a night, um, kind of, you know, those nighttime butterflies that are kind of grayish brown. He was running crazy all over the house to find it. And I heard him crunch it at some point. I was like, okay, he got it and he's eating it. David in Barcelona, Spain. Nice to have you on board. EA3IEK. Raptor 22 Stealth. Cool AM Radio. Nice to have you here, uh, Andre. Our PLF Radio is hearing M12. Mongoose. Nice to have you on board. You like the shirt? Complimentary shirt from uh, some of the uh, YouTube uh, meetings that we have here sometimes. With what's happening now, I don't have no idea when they're going to do something else like that. Matt has faint XPA2 on 13462 upper sideband. Stephen Wood has 11144. Um, solid CW. John McClure. Nice to have you here. Uh, Rodolfo hearing the digital pulses on 13462. Sheldon Harvey, 1111. 144, I would guess, in 13462 boat with fair signals. Rufus Newt says, I've got a raccoon with four babies uh, in the upper part of my barn. They will soon depart. The babies are getting big. PLF radio hearing XPA2. This was pretty cool. So no more scout anymore. The XPA2 13462, it's still there. Pretty good. It's funny because my uh, MLA 30 receives it better than the W6 LVP loop, actually. So Matt says they use T to mean zero, so likely a null message. Oh yeah, they are trash pandas. They are, they they are running around and and that's some parts of Montreal. You need the special trash cans. To make sure they don't open it. Rafael Polino, nice to have you on board and for RPF. Brett Wayne, 11144 S5 in Salamanca, New York. Nice to have you here, Brett Wayne, KC2 and XP. Sean Harvey says nothing published yet on the Min Winter BBC Antarctic broadcast. Someone suggested checking to see if they are on uh, any frequencies registered, which with the HFCC. I wonder. Let's check out the uh, hfcc.org public files. Public data files. Um, so if I look at the public data files. I don't know. A19, B19, by organization. So B19, by organization. I don't know if uh, BBC World Service. Anything here. Trans language. And I hate these. Seven four four five. I don't know. Kind of interesting. I don't know. 
But uh, it'll be interesting to try to see if they are um, if they are broadcasting again. That's for sure. Matt says, long message on XPA2 today. Yeah, it was pretty long. It just stopped not long ago. Uh, yep. Rifleman336, nice to have you on board. And ATUCN from Southwest Ohio. Got an interesting guest for tomorrow's uh, Tri-State Monix meeting on Zoom. So all official SWL channel members are invited. And uh, I'll let you know tomorrow morning if I am available or not uh, to be there. DJ, any prediction when the solar activity will rise again? So, you know, we have a spot this week. We have a, a sunspot that pretty much uh, stayed all week. Um, the, um, the, um, it's expected that maybe by the end of this year, we're going to start seeing a rise in a solar activity. What's interesting, since Christmas, even though there's not been a lot of spots, there still have been more spots in, since Christmas than uh, last year. So um, I'm, I, I think maybe by the end of this year, uh, we're going to start slowly seeing an uptick. Hi, Brawler. Anyone hearing NHK Radio Japan 13680? 13680. Let's check it out here. Uh, so 13680 is frequency 13680. So um, at 21 to 23 UT, if you hear it in Japanese, um, if you hear it in Japanese, uh, they are from the Yamata transmitter site in Japan. Yes, thirteen six eight zero. Let's let me see if I get a peep or something out of it. Thirteen six eight zero. I hear something. I hear something on 13680, but I don't know what it is. It doesn't have the distinct sound of a signal coming out of uh, Japan. Do you hear the language? Can you confirm it's Japanese? Because there's also a CNR1 uh, China Chinese jammer. At this time, Stephen Wood says Glenn Hauser is reporting frequencies for June twenty first broadcast. However, I believe he is referencing last year's. Yeah, uh, that's what he did. He's uh, he's giving last year's frequencies as a tentative possibility for uh, the broadcast. So technically, it would be next Sunday, June 21st. Hopefully, frequencies and everything would be uh, possible for us to announce uh, on the International Radio Report as it would fall the same day as our International Radio Report next week falls on uh, June 21st. So let's uh, hope we got frequencies and, and everything and that it's there and that it's possible for us to to give the details of next uh, week's uh, international radio report. David, 13462, pretty clear in Barcelona. Joe Tyson, thank you. I am $50 poor due to the purchase of an MLA 30 plus and plan on using it with my SDR Play RSP2. You're gonna, you know, it's a great antenna. If it's noisy where you are, you'll have, uh, you'll have a great antenna uh, there for sure. Dejan says nothing on thirteen six eighty, and uh, but can you guys confirm it's Japanese? 
Because if it's Japanese, it possibly is Radio Japan. Absolutely. Matt heard test tones on 12.162. So let's, uh, the next broadcast is in eight minutes. So in eight minutes, you guys can try 10.544. 10544 up uh, CW. And you guys can also try 12162 upper sideband. And that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna test. That's what we're gonna test. Mitch, nice to have you here from Buckeye, Arizona. Happy DXing, nice to have you here. So, Mickey Dalmich says 13680, definitely Japanese. Good signal in Alberta. So, it's uh, Radio Japan from the Yamata transmitter side in Japan. Pretty cool. I hear something here. I hear that there's, a, there's definitely a carrier, uh, but I can't. It's too weak to really make out. So... Um, <laughs> and Dijan says, I'm making the wallets of all of everyone shrink. <laughs> Remember, my wallet shrinks first for you guys to have yours shrink so that you don't have to buy the crap stuff like the K180. <laughs> 550 kilohertz, uh, Pamela here is a, a medium wave station, uh, a medium wave frequency. There's nothing here, especially in midday. Hi, Brawler says, it sounds like Japanese to me. Also, the CNR1 jammer is supposed to uh, sign on at 21.30, according to the EIBS schedule. So, oh, it's not yet. It's starting at 21.30. Okay. Okay, cool. So you're watching the shortwave show. I'm going to open beer number two. Um, I almost feel like uh, trying the uh, Berry Blast. I feel like having some sugary thing here. Let's check it out. Oh, it smells. Oh, man, it's blue. It's like the blue popsicles. It really looks like blue popsicles. Or Windex. <laughs> Let's clean the windows. So uh, cheers, man. That's That smells like candy, actually. It's very sugary, very sugary, but it's actually, it tastes like the blue popsicles. So if you guys add blue popsicles, this is blue popsicles melted with alcohol. <laughs> Pretty much it tastes like that. Uh, what else do we have? Frank says, anyone experience with the Grand GS5 antenna? And <laughs> Dijon can smell a window cleaner in that blue beer. Yes, it does look like it. Eh? <laughs> uh, Yufuk, uh, Yildirim, nice to have you on board from Turkey. JDX percentage is uh, six. What is that? Six percent? Not even. That's five percent. It's actually very, uh, very low alcohol. Five percent. <laughs> Some karaoke. <laughs> I don't want to have a uh, a copyright strike. <laughs> Every time I sing, I got copyright strike, which means I must sing pretty well. Because they actually know what song it is. <laughs> Jerry says, that needs ice. Well, it's very cold. It's been in the freezer, so it's actually very cold. German Robert Milligan, carbonated Windex. <laughs> Looks like that, yes. Stephen Wood, can't do blue. I'll stick to my Sam Adams summer ale. Yeah, I do have a uh, Belgian moon mango wheat also to... Uh, 
to check it out. So uh, this is Canada. My name is Jill, and I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. John Pigny says, I finally got hand sanitizer this week, uh, the first time since March. It's from Craft Distillery in Pennsylvania. The label has a large do not drink on the label. Yeah, you know, there's some drunk guys that drink that stuff because it's cheap and it gives them a high. <laughs> My own songs. <laughs> I'm sure with a few more drinks, there'll be no bother to make one up. <laughs> I'll make a shortwave uh, song. A shortwave rock and roll song. There should be a shortwave rock and roll anthem. We'll change some words, you know. We will, we will, shortwave. Or radio. Oh, I like that, Echidarius. I'm drinking Romulan Hale. <laughs> John Pickney, alcoholics in Alaska used to drink Listerine. Oh, God. That's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah, they. Uh, you have to stay within just a few seconds. If there's a song when you do something on um, on on YouTube, you have to stay within no more than three four seconds before they're gonna just uh, remove the. They're, they'll give you a copyright strike on it. What's nice, at least with music, is that they don't. Uh, it's not a bad copyright strike because on YouTube you could have there are different levels of copyright strike on YouTube. Music in general is just, okay, well, you're not monetizing that thing because of music. Uh, but they leave it there or they block it in certain countries. Because you can get some really, really bad copyright strikes on, on YouTube sometimes. And those are the ones you want to avoid. But, you know, there are stuff sometimes. Like, you know, the uh, Conet Project. I played the, uh, what was it? The... Uh, um, Lincolnshire Poacher number station, and they actually flagged it as copyright strike. And I appealed to YouTube and I said, I'm sorry, but that recording is from something else, they don't own it. I, I, you know, I understand you made a project, you made recordings of it, you don't own that, it's not yours. You just took a recording of something else, you can't claim it's yours. So I actually went against them. I said, no, 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 no. I don't accept that copyright claim. And they backed off immediately because, come on. You know, it's not yours. Lincoln Shire Poacher is another station from the past. Even if you take it and make a recording with it, that is not yours. It is a recording from something else. You did not make the Lincoln Shire Poacher. Oh, I'm hearing 12162 upper sideband. And I'm hearing 10544CW. So 10544CW and 12162 upper sideband. Once again, both of them are number stations. They come from Moscow, Russia. <laughs> CQ Serenade. <laughs> I like that. Tron, Radio Gaga. I like that song from Queen, Radio Gaga. Stephen Wood asking if anybody heard station from Bolivia lately. It used to be several in the 49 meters. I think the most active that has been reported not too long ago is the one on, what is it, 5952, I believe. 
It's a little off frequency. The Blind Picker, nice to have you on board, Rob, W0RAB, and Connecticut. Weather is fantastic. Cool. Joe Tyson, that would be an Indorian ale. <clears throat> Legion says, remember a few years ago you couldn't listen to any music? Yeah, because that's why they did uh, Vivo. Vivo is a YouTube-derived music video channel. They made kind of some... They made deals with the big companies. Uh, you know, it depends on what, Eric. I noticed that uh, sometimes you can go pretty much up to 10 seconds, but... Um, you know, one of the things also you got to be careful uh, here, uh, Eric, is that sometimes they'll just, you know, you put eight seconds and they'll flag copyright. And they'll actually, you'll have to appeal and say, no, this is fair use. Uh, so that, you know. And by the way, if you use, you know, 10 seconds of a song to express your opinion on it, that's fair use. They cannot, they can remove it. It's fair use. Uh, you're explaining something on the song. There's a content that goes with it. Caveman, what type of music I listen to? Oh man, all sorts of things from the old, uh, you know, from the Doors and and Pink Floyd and and uh, and stuff like the Beatles to uh, more modern stuff today. Uh, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> XNE DX, sir. I can hear it coming in the air tonight. The Moscow number station. And the guy, you know, uses a number station and says, I'll meet you at the Kremlin at 9 p.m. Like you said. <laughs> Jerry DX 12162S9 Plus. Or control. Oh, yeah. Wavelength by Van Morrison. 10544S7 in Salamanca. PLF Radio here is both M12 and XBA2. Applause. Nice to have you here. Heard it on the X. ZZ Top. <laughs> Keegan, I can hear 500 miles and I could hear 500 more. That's shortwave. <laughs> Ryan Painton. Nice to have you here. Picked up some New Zealand for the first time a few nights ago. Does it help her to have the built-in antenna up while using external antenna? Uh, well, usually when you use the antenna jack, of a radio, the telescopic disconnects. Uh, so it doesn't technically shouldn't help or hurt. So you could just leave it on and leave it extended. It doesn't matter. DJ says, when I'll be back to school on Monday, I'll be enjoying the morning propagation. Signals from America will come in real good. Cool. Legion's going to listen to Radio Havana, Cuba, having breakfast. Oh, man. Jerry DX, Super Tramp. Eric Cattrall, yeah. Copyright is... And, you know, it's all weird stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Sean Harvey, what kind of music does Jill like? Okay, I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. <laughs> The hell with copyright strikes. Let's listen to some Duran Duran. Jeff KD5 QDO. I I can imagine a guy on some shortwave group somewhere saying, you know that guy in Canada that does the shortwave show? I don't know why. It was two hours of Duran Duran the other day. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> Jeff KD5 QDO from Gross, Texas. Nice to have you on board. Finally, some cooler weather. Cool. Matt says, funny, I've been going through an early Genesis phase when Peter Gabriel was still their singer. I never liked Genesis. There's something about it that I've never been able to grasp. Cool one. Good afternoon. Nice to have you on board. You must get uh, Zoomer AM 740 radio where I live. Uh, yeah, I believe I do. Marc Jutra, salut. Still planning to go outside this weekend? Yeah, it's not in a weekend that I'll go. I'll probably go next week during one weekday, uh, Mark. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> no, I never did, uh, Ryan. I, I actually, I never took the time to um, to to really play around with all the the uh, all the possibilities of Kiwi SDRs. Uh, man, that's that's pretty much what I miss. Also, Eric, uh, Radio Australia on ninety five eighty. I mean, that was the. I think for a big chunk of North American listeners, we can pretty much say that ninety five eighty was our morning coffee shortwave moment. Pretty much, honestly. Actually, I haven't taken the time to listen to maybe enough Genesis. I've um, I've I've heard old Genesis and new and, and the '80s one. The '80s is very commercial and really not what I like. The only thing I like in the '80s from Genesis, I do like uh, because of the video clip. I like uh, Land of Confusion, but apart from that, I'm not. Uh, it's too. It's very commercial stuff. But um, you know. There is Bill and Ted and Paul the Cat face the music. A <laughs> perfect ring to it. Yeah, I listened to a lot of Led Zeppelin in the 70s and in the 80s, I mean. Um, Jim Page or Jimmy Page. Mrs. Radio Canada. Yeah, that was also an interesting lesson. Yeah, I'm going to check it out, Ryan. I need to take more time. Actually, I haven't been tuning around Kiwi SDRs in a long time, and uh, it's something that I actually um, I like to do from time to time to see what can be received at different parts of the world. I need to, to go back there again. Matt, do you know uh, what? Whoa, whoa. Uh, okay, Dejan says, "Do you know?" Uh, when Radio Canada International dis discontinued their German service, I couldn't really find any info. I don't. Um, I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. Uh, Echidarius likes the way Phil Collins sings. Matt says, Land of Confusion is a pretty good song. I agree with you there, but I'll take any Gabriel's solo stuff over 80s Genesis. Yeah. You know, I never been a great fan of Peter Gabriel uh, in general, although there are some good songs in, in all of his uh, solo career stuff. One of the songs that I always hated as a teenager was Sledgehammer. Until at a concert, we had an Amnesty International concert in Montreal. And there was Sting, Bruce Springsteen, Peter Gabriel, and uh, Yusun Dur, and Tracy Chapman, and some local artists here. When Peter Gabriel started his show, 
where it's sledgehammer. It was there was something about it, and it made me kind of respect sledgehammer a little more. <laughs> they really shocked the monkey. I think was when I was a teenager, like a lot of people, I was hearing suck the monkey for some reason. Uh, Rolling Stones. Yeah, I like Rolling Stones. My brother is a big Rolling Stones fan, so I did listen to some Rolling Stones a lot. Caveman. Heard Radiohead, Muse. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Muse, I listened a lot. Uh, I like a lot of uh, Muse music. Radiohead, somewhat. Uh, Joy Division a little bit also. Yeah, the puppets uh, from the uh, Spitting Image. It was a very nice video. I mean, it was kind of kind of cool. Ricardo Silva, nice to have you here from Portugal. Let's check it out here. In seven minutes, by the way, there's uh, if there's traffic, 9344. So I don't know if there's going to be traffic. 9344. And um, 11.562, upper side band. So that's in seven minutes. Once again, Russian number stations. Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? Mika Dalmich came across a cassette the other day of Australian Forces Radio. I forgot I had. I had to look at the QSL I received from them. Great memories. I I remember that reminds me of uh, the American Forces Radio when they were actually broadcasting um, uh, base, baseball games in the 80s. Dejan asks, would you say of yourself you're more of a program listener guy or more of a DXer and signal hunter? Um, I would say I'm uh, pretty much split in the middle, half and half. I'm 50% program listener and 50% signal hunter. I like to go around and try to find stuff. But I do like to sit down and listen to programs from different stations. Oh, yeah, the music video for Sledgehammer is, is, is beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, Eric Cottrell, it was amazing. They had that, uh, uh, it was the 40th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, and they had made a tour, and they went to like eight or nine cities only. And Montreal was part of those cities. And so we had local artists, we had... Um, Michel Rival, which is a local Quebecois artist. We had uh, Michel Pagliaro, also a local artist. Uh, then there was Yusu Endor. There was Tracy Chapman. Then followed by Peter Gabriel. Was followed by um, Sting. And the show ended by with Bruce Springsteen. And uh, I still remember seeing Sting and Bruce Springsteen on stage together singing Every Breath You Think, which was amazing. So that show started like at 4 p.m. in the afternoon and ended at 1 a.m. that night. It was a hell of a long show, but it was it's one of the best moments uh, I can remember. And I was with some friends and uh, we had a hell of a lot of fun that night. We ended up uh, drunk in a park. Um, drunk. <laughs> that was the funny part. Uh, I shouldn't say this, but we ended up drunk at a park, and we would um, pretend we were in a swimming pool and um, and swim in the grass. <laughs> uh, I remember it was a warm evening. It was, I think, September, but it was a warm summer-like day. And anyway, I mean, we had a lot of fun. And uh, one of the great memories I have of uh, my teenage years, no, well, adult years. Well, we were in 80, it was my teenage years. We were in 87. So, I mean, I was still, I was not supposed to be drinking beer, actually, technically. But one of my friends had more than 18 years old. So 
he would go and fetch the beer for all of us. And they didn't really care in 1987. It was it's not like today. Today it's like they're gonna go nuts. In 1987, it was like, yeah, it's okay. You know, easy times, just relax. Yeah, I remember one of the guys there was a, like a you know, he was a very like the the kind of guy that always does things that is like, yeah, you sure want to do this? I'm not, yeah. He was always the one that would bring the beer and say, oh, I'm going to drink in the park. And it's like in 87, 88, you could have a beer in the park and the cops would come by and they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they, all they said, they would say is, you know, okay, well, you look like cool guys. Just, just don't make any trouble, you know, and they just move on today. Forget it. Uh, Jim Page says, uh, been getting quite a lot of different long wave beacons past couple of nights. Really? Where are you located? Uh, Tracy Chapman. I, I purchased that album. Tracy Chapman. I had purchased that album. It was a very good album. Um, Matt says the video for Sledgehammer is unparalleled. It's a fun song, but that video made it a monster hit and a signature tune for him. Absolutely. Yeah, but there he does have better songs. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Ryan, how do you know when the weather conditions are going to be good for shortwave listing? Well, um, it's most because weather itself for shortwave is not something that um is not something that affects shortwave except for thunderstorms that will sometimes do static crashes uh, it's, it's more of the space weather the sun and all of that one of the one of the websites that has a lot of information and down to earth easy to understand spaceweather.com cool one is what you're drinking colored blue, or is it just a reflecting blue background light? <laughs> it is blue. It's a thing called um, Berry Blast by Smirnoff, given by my neighbor, because I don't buy that stuff. Uh, Eric Cottrell. One of the songs I like with uh, Peter Gabriel is uh, Don't Give Up, something like that. He's doing a duet with uh, Kate Bush. That's a, that's a nice song. But I like uh, I, I like some some Peter Gabriel. There's there's some good songs in there. Um, mm, 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 Golden Dragon 1964. Nice to have you here. Rush, Spirit of Radio. Oh, yeah, true. Erica Trell. Yeah, I like Revolution by Tracy Chapman. It's such a great song. It would be extremely appropriate. That song would have been appropriate with, with what happened. Uh, and here we have XPA2 starting. 11562 upper side band. Not hearing anything on 9344. But XPA2 is there on 11562. Take care, Luigi. Fais attention à toi. À bientôt, mon ami. Jimmy Page says uh, American Forces Radio was a great was a great good music station too. Dijon says I would say that I uh, like both like programs, especially the mailbag show and several German language programs, as well as hunting for signals such as number stations and so on. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a mix of all of that together. Stephen Wood says, well, in U.S. Army, our truck broke down on the Autobahn, and I had to stay with the vehicle and had a boombox to listen to AF uh, to Air Force Network. 
American Forces Network from Detroit Tigers baseball game. Wow. Cool. Jeremy Roberts Milligan. Have you ever heard of Canadian artist Daniel Potter? Um, I don't know. Name kind of rings a bell, but I'm not sure. Mickey Delmage says, um, Australian Armed Forces Radio was to Somalia in 19037.5, 25332.5, and 13508.5, and to Cambodia on, wow, what weird frequencies. This is crazy. Tom DeXer, for him, Clapton is God, best rock guitarist by far. Jerry DX at Billy Idol and Slash at the casino here. Good show. I'm sure. Like Billy Idol. Stephen Wood uh, saw Eric Clapton and Carlos Santana jam together in Springfield, Massachusetts, 76 77. Eric Cottrell, I la gueule de bois. Yep. Uh, Dijon says here in Germany, you're allowed to drink beer, wine, and sparkling wine at 16. Also here in Bavaria, it's quite normal to drink a uh, beer at lower age. Yeah, Ryan, spaceweather.com. And the extras say, yeah, don't give up with Kate Bush. Uh, Faint XP2 and 11562. <clears throat> Jamie Page, what's my favorite radio to use? Uh, I got to say, I... I've become a great fan of the SDR, so of course my SDR play RSPDX uh, for sure uh, is is, an, uh, is is one of my favorites to use. But apart from that, if I'm not at the computer, say I'm not at the computer, um, I would uh, probably what I like to use um, the XH Data D808 portable is nice. I have a um, I don't know. Something special about the uh, San Gian ATS 909X. Of course, one of the good old radios that I've got, which is the Grendig G5 that I love a lot. It's an amazing radio. So um, take care, Frank. See you next time. Rufus Newt says 11.562 is good. <laughs> John Pickney. <laughs> Oh, man. What else do we have? John Pinkney. Did Montreal TV have a local TV dance party show? I used to watch Saturday Date on CGOH TV when visiting Ottawa. Yeah, yeah, there was some stuff. There was some kind of local, localized stuff on uh, on TV, but it was not, you know, I, I didn't watch that. And I would kind of be annoyed, actually, at those shows. <laughs> Most of the time. Greg May, have you ever seen the BBC documentary on Kate Bush? It was uh, way before her time when you look at her performances. No, I've not seen any uh, documentaries on Kate Bush, but I know she was very, she was very unique in her style of, of what she did. Uh, one of the best videos that made me actually hear that song, because without the video clip, I maybe would never have uh, listened to um, that song. It's, um, oh man, it's called, is it that? Yeah, Cloud Busting. I love that song, and the video clip is amazing. It's it's like she's with a professor or something, and and he creates a machine that can control weather, and uh, a great video clip and great song. Cloud busting, I love, I love that song. King has a red cardinal right now on the bird feeder outside. Cool. We got some cardinals here. I've uh, seen one go by a few times. With uh, I see the female. She's kind of green, kind of uh, yellow greenish, and he's like the male is like red, really bright red. And I hear the I hear them singing uh, all the time. 
Jimmy Page, I'll have to try that Granite G5 and using uh, an NLA thing uh, with SPI Discovery. Uh, Granite G5 is an amazing portable receiver. It is one of the favorites, by the way, for people uh, for people to um, uh, DXFM. Legion, when you live with your parents back in the day, what did they say to your antennas? Did you have a garden for long wires? So we lived in an apartment. Um, and honestly, they never said anything about my antennas. They just let me do whatever I did. I would just do whatever I wanted, and that's it. And nobody ever said anything. Uh, the landlord never told me anything about my wires and stuff. It just it was just there. And so um, I would live in the top floor. I, would, I had, a at some point, a wire that would go across the roof up to the fence in the backyard. I was, I don't know, something like, you know, 120 or 130 feet. Marc Jutra. Yep, no problem. Fais attention à toi. Ryan, what does a normal day of shortwave listening look like for you? What times and what devices are you using? So, a normal day of listening for me will be, so let's say um, I wake up and I will do some listening. It all depends on the time. So in the morning, in the morning, I will um, probably check a little bit of shortwave, see what's on. But as the day goes, often in the midday, it's not shortwave is not the best here. So I'll sometimes uh, use maybe uh, I'll switch to a, a VHF, UHF, and see what's there. I might choose, you know, the ICOM ICR30. It depends. It depends on what's 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 there. Um, I would say my probably the best uh, shortwave time for me will be starting mid-afternoon uh, local, which is, um, you know, 18, 19 UT maybe. And I'm going to start checking out European stations I can hear, stuff like that, things that are coming from different areas. That's where it starts getting interesting in the signals here. And I uh, will go through and check schedules, see what stations... I might have missed that's on the air or not. And um, then um, I, I'll sometimes tune around at other frequencies or try to find some ham stations. Uh, it really is very different from day to day, I would say. The devices I will use are... So when I wake up, you know, I work from home. So when I wake up, I'll be here in the office with my computer. Uh, of course, my SDR play RSP device, RSPDX, is going to be fired up and working, and I'll be checking out stuff there. Um, depending on when it is, so uh, this could be my main radio for most of the time. In the summer, I like to go outside. I often go in the balcony in the backyard, try and enjoy a little bit of you know uh, outdoor weather. Then I'll be using portables most of the time. And uh, I sometimes tune the RSPDX using remote desktop. But most of the time, what I will do is uh, use some portable receivers and see what I can use, like the XH Data D808. I like to, I have a lot of portable radios here. And what I like to do is kind of do a cycle through the radios so that not all the radios are going to be, uh, you know, I'm not going to use all, always the same radio. So yesterday, for example, uh, I took out these two radios here, which is the uh, the um, Sanji and ATS 909X. And the uh, I had not tuned the uh, old Ethan S53, S350DL in a while. So I brought them up. I actually ended up yesterday uh, listening to Radio New Zealand from... I listened for three hours. I listened to Radio New Zealand starting around 10 p.m. local, which was 02 UT, because it was really coming in great. And I was outside in the backyard and listened to it until it signed off 13840 at, uh, what, 0458, something like that. 
I even tuned 9700. I could hear its interval signal, but it was not as strong. But I listened to Radio New Zealand for like three hours. Actually, yesterday I enjoyed. They had a music show, which was like cover artists that were playing known songs. Uh, and I think they were New Zealand artists kind of covering popular songs from different artists. It was really, really nice. I enjoyed that a lot. So uh, what else do we have? Michael Langer, QSL for the American Forces uh, on the web page. Jerry X. Uh, Let me just go down here. Sorry. Lee Burkett, take care, my friend. Have uh, Stay safe. Post those pictures and videos of you listening to radio. It's always fun. Yeah, Weathering, Weathering Heights is a classic from uh, Kate Bush. Absolutely. Hey, Sharmak Litz. Nice to have you on board, my friend. Legion have found a Grunting Satellite 6001 for 90 euros in good condition. Would you say it's worth the money? For 90 euros, I would purchase it if it works well. And be very careful because the Grandic Satellite 6001 is a complex receiver. It might look like it's in good condition, but it might not work well. And that thing, you'll not be able to fix it. It's too complex and nobody's going to touch it. So make sure if you purchase it that it works and is in good condition. If it is and it works well, I think it is worth 90 euros, honestly. David says, uh, I love my AirSpy HF Plus dual port. doesn't have the wide bandwidth of the SDR play. That being said, a few days ago, an update was released that increased it. But dynamic range and signal handling are great. Greg May, uh, not much of a ground system since I'm using loops. Um, loops are not grounded. So uh, the only grounding that I have is in the back, and it's um, for the sloper. The outer shielding is uh, kind of grounded on the metal shed in the backyard. Take care, Stephen Wood. Well, it's nice to have you on board. Um, Ryan says, was picking up New Zealand and Florida. Jerry DX worked as a bodyguard for Chubby Checker and Sass Jordan 15 years ago. Wow. My cousins are on 5275. Let's check it out. I haven't listened to them in a while. I'm not hearing much right now. I'm going to have to rearrange. I'm going to rearrange my antennas uh, this weekend. Ron Hicks, you see a QSL card behind me. Oh, yeah. That's uh, John Fisher, which is a uh, one of the, the followers here, and he's a member of CIDX, and we've met several times on, uh, on um, at the CIDX barbecue. KC1 FTJ sent me his QSL card. It was really, really cool. Uh, um, what else do we have? So, when then have you tried loop on ground? You mean loop like really near the ground? Because loop antennas don't, um, I, these are magnetic amplified magnetic loops antennas. So they don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of uh, effects uh, depending on how high it is. It's really finding where it's the best um, uh, placement for lower noise. So Joseph Ickenbaum, what do you mean by, um, do you mean for shortwave purpose? Scanning the shortwave bands. You know, every radio has scan capability. I don't know about you guys, but I um, I don't 
I don't use that capability almost never. The only capability I use sometimes is ETM, the easy tuning mode, on the uh, Countycom GP5 SSB. But apart from that, I rarely scan or anything. I just I like to manually scan and see what I can hear. DJ, now do you like the Ethon radio beyond the Sanjian? They're also sold as Texan and Lextronics radios, aren't they? Uh, yes, they do have a Lextronics version, and uh, I think there is a Texan version of it. Uh, you know, it's nice. It's an analog radio with uh, frequency uh, frequency counter, so it does drift a little bit and all of that. But it's it's decent. It's okay. I mean, uh, I would not have purchased it at the full price of uh, like you know 179 bucks that they sold at first. But when I got it, it was like 69 dollars. I thought at that price it was perfect. And yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. The one that is crappy, really, is the other one here, which is as cousin, the Ethan S. Uh, this one is like Grundig. It's Grundig branded, the S450 DLX field radio. That's the crappiest piece. I was about to say a bad word uh, that you can have as a portable radio. It's really, really not worth it to have the Grundig name on that. Grundig should be ashamed to have sold their name to. To have that there because it's crap. Greg May, I have two MLA 30s and I'm thinking of using one unit as preamp for a log antenna. XNADX are a fan of Simon and Garfunkel, Beatles, Beach Boys, Doobie Brothers, Eagles. No, no, uh, Jerry DX, the barbecue is in, um, is in August. But more and more, it looks like it's going to be a um, a virtual event this year. Um, pretty much. Sean McNee just got a, young, a Grand Yacht Boy 300P on eBay. Father Day present for myself. Cool. I got one here. I got one here. It, it, it's it's okay. You you know it's sensitive. You're gonna you're gonna get stuff with it. It's it's nice little you know. Nice little radio. Yeah, scanning shortwave bands. I don't know. I I don't really know what what you know. Anybody use a radio in particular to scan the shortwave bands in general? I usually do more of a band scan manually. Take care, Dom Dxer. No, I've never tried that, uh, Greg. The problem with scan on shortwave, and that's that's the biggest problem. And and like Eric Cottrell says, you know, uh, on shortwave, signals go up and down all the time. So scanning is not something that I think a lot of people use because it misses out on a lot of signals that by uh, chance. The signal was weak. It was at the, you know, like at the bottom when that happened. And it went through it and didn't detect it. Radio Exterior de España. Should be in English in a few seconds. But scanning the shortwave bands is not something I ever found really useful, honestly. Yeah, for ETM to work well, Joseph, is that you need to be in a place where there's not too much noise. Um, it really, really works well, but it uh, it's like every radio. Uh, if the noise level or the noise floor is too high, it doesn't work well. I never tried that, uh, Greg May. Hey, William Helms from Florida. Nice to have you on board. Ray Kelly. Nice to have you on board from Nova Scotia. William Helms from Florida. Hey, 
Yeah, that's the thing about the uh, the fading. There's too much fading on the signals on shortwave. Okay, Mickey Elmage. I don't know. Take care, Rene Charbonnier in the Netherlands. Stay safe, my friend. Yeah, I know, Dijon. It's uh, it's been uh, it's been a long time since Grundig's name has been uh, has been uh, gone and sold out. Ray Kelly listening to Behavior Night, Behavior Night on WBCQ seventy four ninety. I miss my Yacht Boy 400. I had the uh, non-PE version. Uh, but they're the same radio. The PE version is silver, if I'm not mistaken. Or the uh, one that I had, the uh, Yacht, Yacht Boy 400, was uh, black. <sighs> Mad Radio DX also prefers manual band scans, as ATS picks up electrical noise, at least for me. Yeah, and overloading and all sorts of things can happen. So it's, I also do a lot of the band. Most band scans I do are going to be manual band scans. Terry Colgan. Hola. Nice to have you here, Terry. Take care, Alex. Be one SBM. Stay safe. Ray Kelly, Radio Radio Exterior de España, booming in in English. Yep, only six ninety right now. Pretty good, pretty good here too. Okay, so you'd like the radio to just stop on the frequency for five seconds and then continue the next color five kilohertz. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I understand what you want, Joseph. Rick Sutter, nice to have you here from Milwaukee. Yeah, that's why the PE version is silver. The non-PE version is black. Lee Thompson, nice to have you here, Lee. WA8 QFE. Yeah, shortwave uh, SWLDX Bulgaria, yeah. John Pickney, retired engineer with a cable company, so why not? Kevin Wood from Nova Scotia, nice to have you here. So this is the shortwave show. So uh, Radio Exterior de España coming in very well on 96, 90 kilohertz. Except when I put the... Uh... So look at that, guys. You, you guys are going to see the visuals of this. Let me just uh, make sure that it is uh, zoomed out a little bit. So now I will turn on the K180 WLA on shortwave. And you will notice... The tons of spurious signals here, 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 there, and there, there, which is all FM radio stations breakthrough. And shortwave becomes almost deaf. But back on MLA 30, I'm back to normal listening. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, if I put, like, I'm going to put 10 megahertz. So you guys get to see 10 megahertz. So I'm seeing from 5,000 to uh, 15,000 right now. Let's put it on the, uh, look at all the spurious lines. Impossible to listen shortwave on a K180. Only spurious stuff. I hear Spain right now, but very, very weak. Now back with Let's now this one is the W6 LVP loop. 
back to normal. And MLA 30. So, you know, it's impossible to listen to shortwave with the uh, K1NEWLA, unfortunately. Take care, Calvin. It was nice to have you on board, as usual. Yeah, Eric, exactly. The uh, amplifier in the loop is is huge problem. It's a huge problem. Uh, I get all the uh, Montreal FM stations that are, uh, like, overloading the amplifier. But, you know, I've, I've, I've learned to love... So, for example, let's check 11 meters just for the fun of it. I'm going to go to see if there's any activity on 27025. Oh, yeah, pretty good. So let's go to 15313. 50. Any activity? So now I'm at six meter band. I'm on 50 megahertz. Um, when I get to I like 50 megahertz above it starts to get interesting and the vhf range is interesting but man it's crazy dejan well it, that's the problem uh dejan because it's not just dedicated to shortwave it's it's a wide band antenna the mla30 is long wave medium wave shortwave but the k180 is long wave medium wave shortwave vhf it goes all the way up to 180 megahertz and I think the fact that it goes up to 180 megahertz is also the problem. It's overloaded and it's crazy. Take care, John Picnic, 73. Have a great weekend. So, you know, Greg, yeah, the, that antenna needs to... Kamek Z76 says, that antenna is terrible. Thanks for testing it. Yeah, well, you know, that I'm here for that. You know, somebody told me, well, you know, bummer. I said, well, bummer, yes and no, because I am able to tell you guys, stay away from the K180. Uh, and at first it was bummer. But as I'm learning to use it, you know, for example, if I go to 162400, which is the NOAA station in Vermont, I actually am getting a better signal on the 162400 NOAA weather station from Mount Mansfield uh, to here than on my mobile vertical. And when I was listening to six meters, um, six meters was stronger. Six meters was stronger on that antenna with FT8 mode than it was on my mobile vertical. So I'm kind of starting to think that, well, I'm going to dedicate this, this, the antenna to, I'm going to dedicate the antenna to, v, to um, you know, uh, uh, VHF listening. So not all is lost, but it's sad that it doesn't perform as well on, the uh, on the shortwave bands 27 385. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there for sure. 385. Enter lower side band, and let's put the uh, here we go. Lots of usually there's a lot of stuff there because there is uh, 11 meters is open right now. Joe Tyson, I regret not buying a Yadboy 400 and Greenwich G5, but I do have a Sony. Have you got some nice Sony radios there? Sony 7600 are great radios. So thanks for sharing, Cool AM Radio, for the uh, radio magazine stuff. It's always cool. Take care, uh, Dejan. It's nice to have you here. 
Greg says they should have known better. Most people buying the K-180 live in big cities and have limited antenna space. It would have at least had the ability to filter out. Yeah. You know, uh, when I bought, when I purchased the W6LV P-Loop, at least uh, Larry, W6LVP, contacted me and said, he looked, he took the time to look at the map, uh, FM scan map, and said, you got some really strong FM stations where you live. You'd be better off with filters. Graham Taplin, the guy that said he is not hearing Brother Stare today, I've heard him on every channel. Oh, yeah, I've heard, I don't know, I, I didn't see that pass, but uh, I've heard him last night a few times and today, and I don't care. I hope he's gone. <laughs> Curtis Bazaar has a Grandic shortwave. Cool. What model? Jamie Page says 9395 WRMI oldies. Cool. They have a lot of music recently. Uh, it might. I don't know. I have to check it out. I haven't tuned uh, FM station. I'm going to test out something here. I'm going to put 107 900 wideband FM, wide FM on that. Wide FM. So FM, wide FM. I can say that I can actually receive the, uh, usually I should be able to receive the, uh, oh, wait, my filter is on it here. Here we go. So what do we have? Do I hear it? <laughs> well, it's overloading the RSP when I actually turn it off there. So uh, I don't know. But a VHF on the a high range, uh, I've been checking it out. I've been um, checking out if I can receive some of the uh, amateur satellites, which I did. So I don't know. I, I'm going to check it out soon. I'm going to check it out soon. <laughs> it's okay, Matt. The proud geek is my nephew, so you can, uh, you can, we can let him go. Um, we can let him go. I'll I'll accept that trolling off to, from my nephew. So uh, <laughs> you see, proud geek. That's uh, that that's a uh, that's a uh, that's moderators for you. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're I, I, you're okay, uh, Matt. You you did a good job, and I, it's totally all right. It's just that uh, he uh, he's he's my nephew. Yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 him. <laughs> oh man. I got some good moderators. So Matt, you know. Yeah, it is, Matt. It's okay. Don't worry. You didn't know. It's you did a perfect job here. No, don't be sorry, Matt. You did the perfect thing to do. You did the perfect thing that that should be done. You, uh, you, you know, you banned an unknown, an unknown user that that uh, wanted to uh, promote his channel. Uh, those darn YouTubers that think they got to, you know, troll others that are more popular to get some views. Man, I can't stand them anymore. Jim Robert Milligan, Ethan Satellite, and Ethan Field Bluetooth Grounding Edition. Very both powerful receivers. Cool. <coughs> cool M Radio. 
6.205 a.m. Laser hot hits. Mostly in Europe. Bob Perrin, what is the little study antenna sticking up on top shelf next to the world globe? Next to the world globe. Uh, you're probably talking about here, which is a, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go get it, but there's a Radio Shack, uh, Radio Shack frequency counter there. So right here behind the speaker right here is a Radio Shack frequency counter that goes all the way up from one megahertz to 1300 megahertz. So it's, that's the antenna sticking out of it. An old frequency counter I've I've purchased long time ago. Yeah, I should. Should I make my nephew a moderator? Hmm. Here we go. The proud geek is a moderator. He's gonna start deleting everybody else's <laughs> everybody else's messages. <laughs> There we go. Um, <clears throat> Ryan, what should I upgrade to from the stock wire antenna that came from the PL660? Uh, you know, the MLA, the MLA30 loop is actually a decent, uh, a decent antenna with a portable. The only thing you'll need to have that adapter to plug it on your PL660, which is because uh, the MLA30 comes with an uh, SMA connector, but it's a decent, it's a decent, um, it's a decent antenna to pair with a portable, and it's the MLA30 is very portable. Jeff and Robert Milligan experimenting with an outdoor HD TV antenna just for fun, actually found it filtered a lot of the RF noise, I guess. That's because of the HTDV filtering circuit. Hmm. Frank Ireland, nice to have you on board. Bob Perrin, Radio Shack. Hey, I used to be at Radio Shack all the time. I used to be at Radio Shack all the time. Ron Hicks wrote seven reception reports today. Wow. Cool. Yeah, you could use the MLA 30 on the RTL SDR, but uh, you know, on each F, the RTL SDR is really kind of crappy. So, you know, I've got the V3 here, this thing. It's okay. I mean, it's in shortwave, it has tons of spurious signals and everything. But, you know. But the uh, VHF, UHF, yeah, kind of surprising, though. Uh, Kimaxi 76, when I first started doing shortwave, I tried hooking up it up to my TV antenna. Doesn't do very good on shortwave. Yeah, in general, uh, yeah. I remember my first um, experiences as a shortwave listener of uh, in, in my teenage years where I hooked up rabbit ears to my uh, DX100 and wondered if rabbit ears would be better. Uh... <laughs> If rabbit ears would be better uh, for shortwave than whatever came with the uh, with the radio, <laughs> I, uh, I that experiment didn't last very long, honestly, because I think I very very fast I understood that uh, you know. Uh, Bobby Burgess says RTL SDR is great for ADSB, AIS, and trunking. Um, I, I did some ADSB. That that works fine. That works pretty good, uh, for sure. But um, I didn't. Um, you know, for shortwave, it's not the it's not a good thing. 
But you know, VHF, UHF is there's kind of some decent things in there, uh, honestly. So, uh, hey guys, I've been on for two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, I'm a little tired, you know, recorded the International Radio Report show and all of that today. So, uh, I'm going to say goodbye for tonight. Uh, will I be on? Uh, will I be on on Sunday? Uh, I don't know. It all depends. But uh, we'll see. If I'm on, I'm on. If I'm not, I'm not. And um, we'll be um, we'll be back next week with the two shows on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, zero UTC. And uh, Friday, next Friday. And maybe hopefully we'll have frequencies for that uh, BBC uh, summer um, broadcast to Antarctica. So stay safe, everybody. Love you all. It's always cool to be here. Always cool to have you on. I will. Um, yes, Eric. That 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 is something we could uh, that could be interesting. A Zoom meeting. Well, um, no, the bars and restaurants. Well, restaurants are open starting uh, June twenty second only, and uh, bars not. So I'm still going to be home on Sunday nights for pretty much. So, uh, but when bars open, eh, I don't know. That's another story. So uh, anyways, take care, everybody. Stay safe. And I'll be uh, listening to the radio tonight. So uh, go to the Facebook group, official SWL channel. And we will, uh, I will, I'll be posting whatever I am receiving and so on. So uh, take care, everybody. Always fun to have you all here. And uh, see you next week. Don't worry, Mongoose. There will be more videos. Don't worry. Take care. Love you all.